Okay. Good evening, everybody. I hope you're doing well. I think you all have yourselves muted. I would sure appreciate it if somebody could chime in and let me know if you can hear me or not. Never fun to talk to an empty room, and I know you're there. So, yeah, if you can hear me, type a quick chat or just, uh, just reply. I just need one brave soul. Excellent. I got a couple loud and clears. Thanks, Daniel, Angelo, and you, Sean. Appreciate your feedback there. This is Steve Olson with the Fourplex Investment Group. Um, I appreciate a bunch of you joining us. I, I see people continuing to tick in, and, and you're all interested in fourplexes, specifically in uh, Cypress, Texas, is what we're going to talk about tonight. And we're going to try to do this more and more, do a webinar every month, because we've got uh, more product coming and more fourplex projects in Utah and Idaho as well. And I know you like to hear about them. And so I, I really do appreciate you taking time out of your evening on a Tuesday. I know it's busy. If you're like me, your kids are just getting out of school and things are a little bit nuts. So uh, sincerely, thank you for, for joining us. And I hope it's productive. I hope you learn what you came to, to learn tonight. So what we're going to do here, and uh, I think you, you should all be seeing this PowerPoint that says uh, new construction fourplexes with FIG. Uh, what we're going to cover, uh, and this is, this is new to some of you, to some of you, this is not new. So I'm going to go through a quick review of, of what FIG is and kind of how we work on a high level, just so you can understand that perspective. And then we're going to get into the, the actual specifics of the project in Cypress, Texas. But as I told you before, I'm Steve Olson. I'm the National Director of Sales here at the Fourplex Investment Group. We're based out of Provo, Utah. We operate here in Utah in the Boise, Idaho metro and in the Houston, Texas metro. And really what we do is we build newly completed fourplex subdivisions in these areas. It's a really, really specific niche, right? To, to only be focusing on, on fourplexes. And we have our reasons for doing it, which I will get into. I think this will uh, take us front to back no more than 50 minutes tonight. And like I said, we'll get into the overall on FIG and some of the, the specifics. But first of all, we live in an age of lawyers, don't we? And that means we have to do things like this, <laughs> this disclaimer here. Uh, essentially what this says is I'm gonna tell you some information about fourplexes and about Cypress and rents and rates of return. You gotta verify that stuff, right? And, and we like educated investors that go and dive in to the data and discover for themselves whether they like it or not. That's what we want you to do. We wanna be an open book here. So please do your research on this stuff. And I think we'd all be happy campers then. All right, got the lawyers out of the way. Good riddance, guys. Let's get into let's get into the the red meat of why you showed up here tonight. And I know many of you have have spoken to us before. Some of you have not. So it's beneficial to kind of understand how this works, how the fourplex investment group operates and works. Okay, we started this concept in 2010, and I don't know if you if you remember back in 2010, but if you were doing real estate back then, especially if you were buying land, people wanted to have you committed. You were insane. That was crazy. Why would you buy real estate? I, I still remember back in 2008 when the market crashed. This was specifically, I think it was in either September or October of 2008. Um, if you were invested in the financial markets or real estate back then, you probably remember where you were when it went out over the news that Lehman Brothers was filing for bankruptcy. Uh, many people consider that to be really when it got hot and heavy in the financial crisis. And wow, it was a rough couple of years, actually a rough probably five years before we really started coming out of that. So in 2010, if you were in real estate, you were certifiably insane. And I'm happy to say that the founders of FIG were certifiably insane back in 2010. Um, I told one of them today that he was insane. That was a joke, obviously, but we were buying land back in 2010 when it was basically free because at this time you could get land for very, very, very cheap prices, but people still needed to live somewhere. I think if you own property back during this time, you'd agree that the tenants didn't go anywhere. Sure, the economy went in the tank, but generally people still needed a place to live. Uh, there were some problems with tenants being qualified, given how many foreclosures were happening and what was happening to people's credit. But you know, people just didn't disappear, 
right? They need, needed to live somewhere still. So we figured, hey, a fourplex investment, right, in the right neighborhood is an excellent hedge, something that should operate cleanly for you during down times, right? If you're going to borrow money for one of those, you've got four streams of income to service one mortgage payment. That's one reason we like fourplexes. So these are designed to be a downside hedge, but they're also designed to have upside potential, right? So I, it's been really great because they really proved themselves, these fourplexes did, during one of the worst times in the real estate market here in the U.S. So one thing that you have to realize about FIG is that FIG is actually not a company. It's just a brand. And underneath that brand umbrella, there are four separate companies that all perform uh, their various tasks to bring you this result, which is a new construction fourplex. So you've got the developer, you've got the builder, you've got the brokerage, that, that's me, and you've got the property management company. So you'll talk to all of us, except the developer. Uh, by the time you're entering the picture as an investor, the developer's pretty much done their job. But uh, you'll talk to the rest of us, the builder, myself or one of my associates and the property manager at various times during this transaction. So let's, let's highlight a little bit about how this actually unfolds. Because if you own single family rentals or maybe you own another fourplex somewhere, this is going to be different than what you're used to. And the reason primarily is this. We are in a market right now where cap rates on multifamily properties are compressed. You've probably heard that phrase used before. Cap rates are compressed. That's just a really fancy way to say that fourplexes in most areas are kind of a ripoff right now. <laughs> They're expensive, right? If you were to go hire a real estate agent in Houston, you know, we'll, we'll keep it about Houston tonight, and say, hey, go find me a fourplex on the open market. Uh, they can do it, but you're going to be pretty underwhelmed with what you find. You're going to be shocked at how much money you have to pay for something that needs a ton of maintenance and is not in a very good area. So FIG has a pre-construction model where when you close with construction financing and you actually go through the build process with us, you get a better price and you get a better cap rate by typically one and a half to two points higher than what the market will deliver. And that translates into equity on a brand new building. And that's what we're known for. That's why people come to us. So what you're going to do, and, and like I said, we'll run through this quick because I know what you really came for is to learn about Cypress tonight. But the first thing you're going to do, you're going to reach out to us, which some of you already have done. And we're going to go through, we're going to help educate you on this process. We're going to talk about your needs with 1031 exchanges and financing and property management and all of these specific questions that I know that you have a bunch of. And once you decide, hey, yeah, I think this is for me, I'd like to invest in a project like this you're gonna decide on a fourplex. You're also gonna decide on some upgrades. So anytime we give a price for a fourplex, know that that is giving a finished fourplex with appliances in place that you can rent out. However, based on the market and based on location within that market, there are some upgrades that make sense that you should absolutely do because they increase your rentability, they decrease your vacancy, and they decrease your maintenance. We've got a project in Utah right now where based on where it's at, you can go pretty basic on your upgrades. On this project in Cyprus, I wouldn't do that, right? I'd, I'd be doing granite and stainless and a few other things that, that uh, we can talk about. So you'll decide on those and then you'll get pre-qualified for a loan. This is a standard 30-year fixed loan pre-qualification from FIG's preferred lender, right? You'll fill out an application, you'll send in a couple of years of taxes and bank statements and a few things, and they're gonna look at you and say, yep, you qualify. Here is a letter of pre-qualification saying you qualify for a 30-year fixed rate mortgage. And I'll get into why that's important that this happens on the front end in just a second. So you can see the next thing on our process, our, our little graphic here is the deposit. And I put here 10 or 10. So the reason I put 10 or 10 is something that happens in new development is we will record a plat with the county where the property is. Recording a plat means we take a big raw piece of dirt, maybe it's 15 acres, and we subdivide it. 
right? We chop it up into a bunch of different little parcels. And these parcels are the, the chunks of land that you, the investors, will close on and that your fourplexes will ultimately be built on. So when you're reserving a fourplex and the plat has not yet recorded, you're going to do a refundable deposit of $10,000. Then once that plat records, it could be anywhere from a year to a couple of months after you come in and reserve. That really depends on the project and the fourplex you choose. That plat records, and now we're into non-refundable territory, and now you owe 10% of your purchase price. So I tell investors, if you're going to wake up in a cold sweat and decide you don't want to do this anymore, that's cool. Just do it before the plat records, right? Because that's when we incur a bunch of fees and engineering costs and, and when this is actually happening. So that's what plat recordation means. Then you're gonna hurry up and wait after that for a few months or possibly longer, depending on what phase you're in, in the project. And when it gets to within about 45 days of you being ready to close on construction, the lender is gonna get back in touch with you and they'll update your financials, right? You might have a new, tax returns, some new bank statements and things that need to be updated. But those will get updated and our preferred lender is gonna take your file over to one of the local construction banks that FIG uses for vertical financing. And this can't just be any bank. You can't walk into Chase Bank and tell them this is what you wanna do. They're gonna look at you like you're a crazy person, right? It's a very unique loan product where a bank will loan you money to build a multifamily property. So that's why we have some small regional banks and credit unions that we typically use on these projects. And our preferred lender, Lane Aldrich, takes your file over to them. And because you're qualified for the 30-year fixed rate mortgage, the construction lender is going to give you that loan because they know that, that you're good to pay it off once the construction is done. So you'll close on that loan and you'll do that by bringing another 15% down because you already have 10% in this deal and it's a 25% down product. Now, that's a lot of math for late on a Tuesday, but 10 plus 15 is 25, 25% down. You're also going to have a good chunk of buying costs of about $34,000. And I'll talk about why that is and why it's a high amount a little bit later when we get into the pro forma. It'll make a lot more uh, sense to you. So now you've closed on the dirt. You're the proud owner of a chunk of dirt in Cypress, Texas. The builder goes through the construction process. You're gonna get draw requests from the builder every month. I actually have one of these under construction myself in a sister project to this one in Spring, Texas. And I had to sign a draw request yesterday for a bunch of electrical and, and some other things. So I, I signed that. That goes off to the bank who sends out an inspector. And the inspector goes to the project and verifies, yep, this stuff is done. So then and only then, is that capital released to the builder. So the builder doesn't get paid for any work that he hasn't actually done. So once you get closing in on completion, you've been through that draw process, you know, the build could take up to a year. You're gonna sign a property management agreement with the management team because they're gonna start looking for tenants prior to completion of the fourplex because the idea is we want that thing rented as soon as possible after completion right? You don't want to sit there with an empty fourplex and a mortgage and HOA and such. That's no fun. But you'll, you'll sign that property management agreement. You'll refinance into a 30-year fixed rate mortgage. We've been getting very good news on that lately with rates coming down. It's improved the cash on cash return on our pro forma substantially. And now you're done. You have a completed fourplex. You've got tenants moving in. You went through a long journey to get there. You had to do a lot. But once you get to the finish, what we typically hear investors say is, hey, that was, that was great. What else you got? Because this is the kind of stuff that you can see yourself owning for a long time. Okay, so that, that's a little insight into the process. And it's going to be totally normal for you, need to talk, for you need to talk to us about that again and get into some of the details. So that's no problem. But there's a lot of markets out there. We only work in a few of them. Because number one, we have to be able to get the a right amount of rent. We are pegged to rents. If we can't get rents, this becomes less valuable to you as an investor because that's what you're in this for. 
you're in it for the cash flow. So we're operating in markets where we can get a good price to rent ratio. We're operating in markets where we have good operational integrity. People ask me all the time, why are you in Utah, Idaho, and Texas? That's random. I agree. <laughs> it sounds like a pretty random combination. But the reason is, is because we have that operational integrity. We can hire the right people on the ground to execute our business model, where we also get that good price to rent ratio. So that doesn't mean that there aren't other markets that we'd love to be in. In fact, we're looking at one uh, very seriously here that we expect to be in by the end of the year. Um, I'll give you a hint. I can't give it away. But if you were to go watch baseball spring training, this is the place that you would want to go to. So that's my hint. You can do with that what you want. The third thing we're looking for in these markets is that they're landlord friendly. Okay, you have to be able to get rid of a tenant if they're not paying their rent, right? Nothing hurts this business model or, or just rental property in general more than unpaid rents, especially somebody that you can't get out and take control of your property, right? I had a rental here in Utah once where the tenants kept dodging the process server. They got really good at this. And so eventually we just let the utilities go because they were in breach of the lease agreement. The attorney told me, yeah, you don't have to keep those utilities on, right? And these tenants actually called in a porta potty <laughs> to the driveway. They thought, you know, hey, you're going to turn off the utilities. Watch this. And they brought in a porta potty. But because they did that, that meant they were going to have to use it eventually. And so that's how they got served the papers. And after, once they got served the papers, they were out quick. And that's typically how it goes in, in Idaho and Texas as well. These are landlord friendly places. If a tenant isn't paying, you can get them out of there pretty fast, especially compared to say San Francisco, where I wonder if you can even get them out in San Francisco. If you live there, you know what I'm talking about. So number four, finally, we want a diverse metropolitan area. We need a growing economy and a stable job market, right? It can't be too dependent on one industry. And that's actually a big misconception about Houston, that uh, you know, if oil goes down, that everybody goes bankrupt overnight. And it's actually not that way. It was that way at one point, but Houston was one of the largest and most diverse economies in the country right now. And that's a big reason why we like it. Okay, so I'm gonna breathe for a second. We went through kind of the high level stuff. And if you've spoken to us about this before, like I said, a lot of that was a review. If you haven't spoken to us before, then yeah, that was new to you, but please reach out with questions and I'll, I'll give contact information a little bit later. So what's going on now is we have a couple of projects going. We're here to talk about Starwood Farms in Cypress, Texas. And you know what I wanna do? I want to share a different screen with you. This is a report from neighborhoodscout.com. Neighborhood Scout is not our website. It's a, a third party website that, that generates information on demographics, crime, schools, uh, uh, employment, a whole bunch of other things. And I just wanna read a, this probably like two to three paragraphs to highlight some of the main reasons why we like this project. Okay, this is, we're off of Telgi Road in Cyprus, okay? Get this, this is directly from the report. This neighborhood's median real estate price is $413,000. That's more expensive than 91% of the neighborhoods in Texas and 78% of the neighborhoods in the US. Average rental price is $1,637. Average rental cost is higher than 82% of the neighborhoods in Texas. This is a nice neighborhood, okay? This, uh, by the way, that this is a nice neighborhood, that wasn't the report, that was me. I'm riffing a little bit here. This neighborhood's real estate is primarily made up of, of medium-sized, so three to four bedroom, to large single-family homes and apartment complexes and high-rise apartments. Most of the residential real estate's owner-occupied. Many of the residences in this neighborhood are newer, built in 2000 or more recently. Some were also built between 1970 and 1999. So this is a new growing area, right? That's the takeaway. Here's what I like the most, ready? Real estate vacancies in this neighborhood are 4.3%, which is lower than one will find in 78% of American neighborhoods. Demand for real estate in this neighborhood is above average for the U.S. and may signal some demand for either price increases or new construction of residential product, 
for this neighborhood. That is the kind of stuff that we want to hear, and I didn't even pay them to say it, okay? That is, that is good stuff for our business model. So we're gonna go back to our slideshow, if I can find it. There we go. So that's just a highlight on Neighborhood Scout of why we like the Cypress market, specifically that sub-market off of Telgi Road in Cypress. Let's talk about the project itself and we'll dig into some numbers, okay? We're looking at 240 doors total with construction beginning in August of 2019. It is a heavily amenitized project. We've got a little uh, splash pad and a big pool, multiple playgrounds, walking trails, dog park, very good amenities at the project. And it's a 7% projected cap rate. Uh, that's a little bit of a fib. It's more like 6.9 is what the pro forma shows. But uh, I rounded up a tenth of a percent. So that picture there, that's actually of uh, Bridgestone Crossing, a project that we're just completing over in Spring, Texas right now. But it's going to be a similar floor plan. So I wanted to kind of give you a little snippet of what that might look like. Let's look at something really interesting here. Okay, you're seeing on your screen right now by Capital Retail Properties, they're a big commercial and multifamily developer in Houston. This is a, a screenshot of their flyer for a project that they're going to be doing. And the reason we care about this, if you look on your screen here where my mouse is wiggling around, okay, I'll annotate it. I learned how to uh, do this the other day, so I'm going to annoy you with it a little bit here. This is their project right here, okay? And then just south of it, where I have colored in blue, this is us. So we're immediately to the south of them. And they have some excellent statistics and data about the area and what's happening. And they see the same things that, that we do. So what I'm going to actually do is I will share that screen with you guys. Let me figure out where it went. Um, ta -ta 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 -ta. Well, you know what, we'll do that. that. That actually closed, so I'll bring it up on another screen here shortly, okay? But they see a lot of the same details that, that we do right now, and especially how relevant it is that the fact that Highway 290 is expanding, all right? And I think I just figured out how to do this. There we go, okay? This is their flyer, okay? You should be seeing Capital Retail Properties, Cadre Realty, this is what they're building just north of us. And as we zoom into more specifics, you know, they've got a 7-Eleven, they've got medical office going in, they've got retail and restaurants, right? So 7-Eleven, Shipley Donuts, McDonald's, and they've got a Class A apartment complex going in. Uh, the reason we like it when Class A apartments come in right across the street from us is because we can blow them away on affordability. If you're familiar with the Houston market, Class A properties, they tend to rent for at least $2,000 a month. They might advertise for lower than that cost, but that's if you sign like a three-year lease. So people tend to go look at those and then they see, oh, wow, what are these guys across the street? Why are they $500 cheaper? It's very good for us. So let's look at what's happening in the area. I'm kind of scrolling around annoyingly here. I apologize. <clears throat> First, what you have to see is Telgi Road, and I'll highlight it for you here. This that I'm drawing on is Telgi Road, okay? Major north-south artery, there's a lot of expansion and widening on Telgi Road. If you're going north on it from here, there's some pretty annoying construction traffic happening right now, okay? But you're looking at 24,000 vehicles per day. You can see this, that go up and down Telgi Road. If you turn off on this intersection, you take Jarvis, okay, over to the major commercial, you're 10,000, and then here's your big deal. Highway 290, they're just finishing expanding 125,000 vehicles a day. That's going to go up because it's widening and it's opened all of this area for more and more development. The tenants that are gonna live here at Starwood Farms have access to every amenity they could possibly need. You wanna go to the gym at LA Fitness? There it is. You wanna go eat at Saltgrass? There it is. The HEB, Big Texas Grocery Store, you go up another half a mile, everything you could ever want from Target, TJ Maxx, Office Depot, Lowe's, IHOP, Chick-fil-A, 
Wells Fargo, Kroger, J.C. Penney, On the Border. I like On the Border. It's kind of good. Good Tex-Mex. Home Depot, Walmart, everything that you could need is right within two to two and a half miles of the project. All right. So with the widening of Highway 290 and with all this traffic and all these amenities, plus the surrounding property that is coming in, I like the chances. Um, so much that I'm actually buying one of the four plexes in this project uh, myself. So let's go back to our slides. Okay, so that's the, the capital retails, the neighbors to the north of us. Let's talk, out, let's talk about the numbers and we're just gonna dig right into the pro forma here. Bring up the pro forma. Share. Okay, so you should be seeing a document, Fourplex Investment Group, Starwood Investment Summary. I know many of you have looked at this. Um, it really helps if somebody walks you through it, which is what uh, I'm about to do for you here, okay? And what we're gonna do is page one's just a cover letter. Page two is some of the highlights. It shows a map of where the project is. Uh, page three is where the red meat is. Okay, so let's let's take a look at this and I'm gonna draw all over it like John Madden. I like to, I figured out how to do this the other day. It's probably really annoying, but uh, you're gonna have to put up with it. Okay, so on this particular fourplex, we have a base price of 686,400. People ask me all the time, well, why is your market value higher? Why is that 750? Uh, the reason being is because what I explained at the beginning, that spread, and cap rates between new construction and completed units. I actually think this will end up being closer to 800 when these are done based on the lack of availability of completed new fourplex in the Houston market, okay? You're ultimately, you're gonna put 25% down, so that means you're borrowing $514,000 on this property. So you're essentially putting coming in with 171,600. But if you remember earlier, I told you you'd have buying costs of somewhere in the low $30,000 range. I said, I think 34, this pro forma says 33. So you can tell that number, it's less than perfect. This is our best estimate though. And that sounds like a lot to you if you've purchased single families or completed properties before. Uh, the reason being is that that 33,000, about 20,000 of it is one year's worth of prepaid interest on your construction loan, All right? You see up here, you're gonna borrow $514,000. Well, the bank's not gonna loan it to you for free. They're gonna charge you interest. So when you close on your construction loan and on the dirt, you pre-fund that account so that you have that in a reserve. And as every month the builder draws on your loan, they debit out the appropriate amount of interest. Something useful to keep in mind, guys, is that a construction interest loan or in, construction loans are interest only. And the interest rate's usually gonna be about a percent higher than what the long-term rate is anticipated to be. So I'm seeing construction loans right now in the low sixes, but they're interest only, and you're only paying per month based on what the builder has drawn against your loan. So on this deal, you're gonna be all in about $204,600 by the time you add your down payment, and by the time you add your buying costs, okay? So that's how we got to the cash, and that's how the things like the cash on cash return are calculated, because this is what's coming out of your pocket ultimately. And if we go over here, follow me over to the top right corner of the income column, right? We have our gross rent, $6,600 a month, okay? That is essentially a base rent that is going to be advertised, right? But there's gonna be a little bit more that the tenants pay beyond that. That's like $1,650 a door. We'll take out some vacancy, that's 3%. And if you want me to adjust that based on what the neighborhood scout article said earlier and send you a customized pro forma, I can do it. I, it wouldn't really affect things much. We're talking like a percent here. We also have this technology and amenities fee of $500. It's 125 bucks a unit per month. So the tenants have access to internet, the amenities, and also this is going to be a smart community. 
every unit is going to have a doorbell camera, a smart lock, an alarm panel, a Nest thermostat, and I don't have the final answer yet, but I'm told we're gonna have some kind of a moisture detector in the laundry rooms, so that uh, if there's any kind of flooding that's gonna happen, you get to know about it before there's a substantial amount of damage. So this gets you to your operating income, right? $6,902 per month. So I hope you followed me on the income that's generated from this project. Let's talk about the expenses, right? We're down here now in the expense column. Uh, this one can be a little bit tricky, so I'm gonna go through it line by line. And as I go through this, you're gonna have a bunch of questions pop up. Well, how did you get that? Or why are you excluding that? Wait till the end of the story, okay? And this will all make a lot more sense, okay? So first of all, on our expense line item, we've got uh, cleaning and maintenance of $75 a month, right? That's low, right? If, if you're comparing that to a single family property, you're thinking that's nowhere near enough for cleaning and maintenance of this property. Well, the reason it's really low is because down here on your association fees, the HOA is actually maintaining the exterior of your fourplex. You're never gonna replace a roof. You're never going to repair stucco or siding or any of those kinds of things. That's not your problem, that's the association's problem. So you're actually just maintaining and cleaning the inside of a brand new unit. Maintenance on a brand new unit, obviously much lower than a unit that was built say 30 or 40 years ago. And you're probably thinking, yeah, well, it's not gonna be brand new forever. Totally get it. We've compensated for that and I'm gonna cover it in just a minute. Okay, so you're gonna have insurance here of 83 bucks. You're also thinking that sounds way low, especially in Texas where insurance is kind of a ripoff. And that's because also in this HOA fee here, your structural insurance or the shell of the building is paid for. So when you buy a single family property or a duplex that's, or a fourplex that's not in an HOA, you're gonna get a standard landlord policy that insures the whole building. Well, you're not paying for that with this insurance line item. The HOA is actually covering that. This one is called, uh, many people refer to it as a condo policy in the insurance business. They call it an HO6 policy. And this is what's covering the inside of your fourplex. So if there's a leaky pipe on the inside, that's not the HOA's policy, that's your HO6 that kicks in. Uh, this policy also gives you typically some liability protection, right, from the tenants. And if, let's say, um, I don't know if you guys have heard, but sometimes they get hurricanes in Houston. That's the rumor going around anyway. If the wind comes in and knocks the roof off of this thing and destroys the inside, the way these insurance claims are typically handled is you'll file a claim under your HO6, and that claim then pays the HOA's deductible. And that policy comes in and makes the repairs to the fourplex under that insurance claim. But Steve, what about flooding like in Hurricane Harvey? What if that happens, right? right? That kind of flooding is not typically covered by this, this insurance. So you have the option. Um, I haven't decided if I'm gonna do it on mine yet or not, because I, I have one in uh, Starwood Farms myself. But uh, we got some quotes recently on our Bridgestone Crossing development. A flood insurance policy runs about $600 a year for one of these fourplexes. So you could go pick one up for that. Uh, we're not in the floodplain, that's why the policy is relatively cheap considering the cost of this building. So you could do that because um, the general rule is if water just kind of comes up into your fourplex from a ton of rain, that's a flood and that's not insured unless you have flood insurance, okay? So that's a bit of a squirrel, but we had to chase it. I know you'd have questions about it. Over here on management fees, Right, you can see we have a low management fee in Texas, 5% of the gross rents collected. Now here's, here's um, the whole story on that, and I have difficulty putting this into the pro forma. Here at FIG in, in Utah and Idaho, we actually charge 7% of the gross rents collected, but that's because we don't really have lease up fees in Utah and Idaho. In Texas, you're gonna have them, but it's hard to say how often you're going to have them. It's a big part of the real estate agent culture down there for some agents to act as apartment locators or leasing agents. So when they bring a tenant because they saw the advertising on the MLS or something, they're gonna to need to be paid a commission. So you're gonna have a whole month's rent go out as a commission. 
However, the, the, uh, our on-site leasing agents are going to do a ton of advertising on their own with signage and banners and direct advertising. When they find the tenant on their own, which this normally is what happens, you're looking at a half a month's rent for your lease up fee. So that's why we charge 5% in Texas to help kind of offset the fact that you will have lease up fees. If you don't pay lease up fees in Texas, you're just not going to rent your units out. That's how a lot of these things get done through the extra advertising that needs to happen. Okay, so here's the one that if you live in Texas, especially in Houston right now, this line item, the taxes, has been burning your eyeballs out. And you probably haven't been paying attention to anything else I've said because you've been saying there's no way that the taxes are 13, 16 a month on that fourplex. I agree, I agree. The reason they're listed as that is if you were to go look up the tax rate for this particular parcel right now, this is what we took that percentage as it shows right now and applied it to the purchase price and we got 1316. The reason that's low is because of this weird line item right here. This is the first time we've ever had this on one of our pro formas, the private mud fee. If you're from Houston, you know that mud stands for municipal utility district. So when you're not in the Houston city limits, you're in these outlying areas like Cyprus, these municipal utility districts are private um, districts that handle the water and the sewer for these developments. And typically what they'll do is they'll do an assessment in their whole district and that gets packed on top of the property taxes. And that's why the taxes in Houston are close to or sometimes in excess of 3%. If you add that private mud fee to the tax line item, which is eventually what will be done with these, now you're getting a tax rate that makes sense. Now you're going, okay, that looks closer to what I'm used to seeing in Houston. So that private mud fee is based on the initial estimates that we got from this new municipal utility district that is being formed for this project, as well as the project to the north of us. That's what they've quoted us on water and sewer. We added it. You'll be much more content with that number once you, you put those together. I hope that makes sense. And, I'm happy to explain that if, uh, if that kind of went over your head. So finally, the association fees right here, okay, 760 bucks a month. Wow, that's thick. That's a high association fee. Well, when you consider the fact that all the exterior is maintained and the bulk of your insurance is handled, we're really just rearranging numbers in different columns here. The association fee pays for your insurance policy, your, your master policy, it covers all the exterior maintenance of your fourplex. They mow the common areas, right? Cut the grass. They do pest control when those pesky snakes or cockroaches, these kinds of things that tend to show up in Houston, right? They, they handle the pest control. They have a budget reserve because at some point, the parking lot is gonna have potholes and needs to be refilled. At some point, the playground needs to be maintained and repaired. Somebody's gotta come chlorinate the pool take care of the pool, maintain the walking trails, right? All these things that need to be done. It also includes all of the water, sewer, and garbage for the, uh, the fourplex. So your tenants aren't hooking that stuff up. So the water, sewer, and garbage is included. The gas and electric is actually metered out separately to each unit and your tenants will pay for that. The only time you'll pay for it is if you're vacant for a pro prolonged period of time, you gotta keep those on right? You want the unit to be cooled at the right temperature in Houston. Otherwise, you get some condensation and things. So you might have some small utilities here and there, but for the most part, that gas and electric is the responsibility of the tenants. Um, and finally, we're talking enforcement of the CCNRs. Uh, that's the main reason why we want this association in place. I know HOA is kind of a dirty word in the investor world, right? You think of these busybody homeowners that go to the meeting and pass all these assessments and, and then you've got big brother HOA annoying you, making you spend money, ruining your investment. I know a couple of you thought that, so I thought I'd just say it, right? So keep in mind, when we start this project, we draft the CCNRs and the bylaws for the association. And then once the project is turned over from the developer, you, the investors, you're the only members of that HOA. Uh, you typically have a common interest, which is we want a clean, maintained development so that we can rent it out, All right? So that's the idea. I, was, I had an investor in town here in Utah the other day, 
took them around to some of the completed projects. And you're welcome to come visit us anytime here in Houston or Boise to, to see completed projects. We encourage that, actually. So I was driving them around here, and one of the tenants in a project in Vineyard had Pittsburgh Steeler sheets hanging up in the front window as their curtains. <laughs> now, if you're from Houston, you really hate that. You really hate the Steelers, okay? Um, whether you love them or hate them, we can't have football sheets up in the window. That's going to devalue the development, right? If you've heard of the broken window theory in psychology, right? When, when something happens in an investor project and things kind of start to go downhill because that one initial moment, well, I called and I tattletailed to, to the HOA and, and they made sure that this was dealt with, okay? We want this project to look the same way in 20 years that it does today, just with bigger trees. We want it to be clean and maintained so people want to rent it still. I know you've seen those fourplex projects before where somebody built it, I don't know, 30 years ago. They were all about that in the 70s and the 80s. And now a lot of those places are really in bad neighborhoods because nobody's minding the store. There isn't a uniform standard applied to the community. And so it's been devalued over time. So that's the main reason we have that association fee in place. So once we do all this, we get down to your net operating income. I'm back on the pro forma, I'm off of my soapbox, but our NOI, 3,900 bucks a month, based on a 5.5% interest rate on a 30 year fixed, your mortgage payment will be about $2,900 per month, right there, which means you have a true positive net cash flow of $1,000 a month on your fourplex in Texas, okay? So some of the other metrics, that you may be looking at. And, and by the way, I, I think that uh, we may end up lowering it over here. You can see the assumption that we used, the 5.5% interest rate. Uh, the rates have uh, still kept going down and down. So this might actually look a little bit better. Right now, our preferred lender is getting refinances done in the high fours um, or right at 5%. And, and this is before rates have come down just in the last a few days. So we may do better. We put 5.5% on these pro formas because we're trying to project out the fact that rates can change between now and when your fourplex is done. We acknowledge that and we try to plan for it to give you the best and most accurate pro form possible. Okay. So you're getting a 6.9% cap rate on a brand new unit, right? Which is a, a respectable cap rate on something like this. You can see over here getting a 6% cash on cash return. That's not the whole story. Um, I realize you can go buy single family homes and other kinds of investments and, and potentially get a better cash on cash return. But once you take into account everything, your buy and hold projection, the fourplex is a really solid option. And it's why I buy them myself. I eat my own cooking here. Uh, what we want to look at is you can see these columns, right? Year three, year five, seven, 10, right? We're looking at how this is going to perform. And keep in mind, the assumptions in these performances, they assume that your expenses are going to increase at 3% per year, but that your income is going to increase at 2.5% a year. Same with your appreciation. And we do that, we separate those a little bit to acknowledge the fact that this fourplex isn't going to be new forever. It's going to gradually get a little bit more expensive to maintain on the inside right? You got plumbing updates to do. Maybe you got to fix an air conditioner, or replace one. These things happen. So we don't want to maintain that same ratio over time. But even with that being said, your cash on cash in year three is seven. You're at eight in year five. And you just keep going up because your mortgage payment stays flat, but your rents are going up. If you're an internal rate of return person in year three, we have a 24% return. That actually IRR goes down over time because IRR likes you to be investments for shorter periods, okay? Uh, what this doesn't take into account is your depreciation, especially if you do a cost segregation study. I don't want to get into the weeds too much on that with you guys here today, but if you uh, can qualify as a real estate professional and you can depreciate this through a cost segregation study, which is where you front load a lot of the depreciation, this really gets exciting. I mean, this, this can put twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 extra in your pocket every year of taxes that you didn't have to pay because you depreciated your new building, okay? So that's a, oh, that's a little winded going through the pro forma there. 
I'm going to go back to our PowerPoint. And I just want to show you a layout of the project. So this is what Starwood Farms looks like. I'm going to get my, my pen out. You're so annoyed with my pen by now, I'm sure. But you're almost done. You guys have done great. So over here, this is Telgi Road, right? We enter the project right here, OK? And this is phase one. This one right here that I'm outlining starts construction in August. I think we have one fourplex left in this phase. I believe it's this guy right here, C. Okay. And then of course, over here you have phase two. I won't, well, I'm gonna outline the whole thing because it is kind of fun. But this is phase two, this starts in September. I've probably got four fourplexes left in this phase. I don't have it off the top of my head. I believe they're this stretch right here, K, L, and M, and then uh, probably this one right here. Okay, and you can see that we wind around through phase three, right? Phase three and four are kind of in that uh, October, November time frame, and then over five and six is that November, December time frame. So this project will be completed and fully delivered um, by the end of 2020. The first units will be on the market for rent, likely about this time next summer. Even though we have a one-year contract for the builder, um, <clears throat> typically what's going to happen here is in Houston, we can deliver just a little bit early. Don't count on it. Um, you know, it's always nice to just plan on 12 months, but uh, if our current project down there, Bridgestone Crossing, is tracking anything like this one, Will, uh, we're delivering about two months ahead of schedule on that project, if that makes sense. So you're going to have a lot of questions about how the construction loan works, about how property management works. How does the property manager decide who he's going to lease first, or lease first, right? Um, what about flooding in Houston? Always a concern that people have. Oh, look at my drawing. It went over the next thing. That's just nonsense. We'll erase that. Okay. So that's why we want you to reach out. Okay. We can talk about financing, the deposits, and start dates. What if you have a 1031 exchange? Any other questions that you have? Trust me, we've digged into this. I've digged into the point where I'm investing in it myself. If you want a copy of the Neighborhood Scout um, report that I showed you, as well as that market report about from the guys north of us, uh, of the uh, cadre and capital retail properties, I'm happy to send that out to you, right? Just shoot me a message. My email address is right here, solson at fig.us. And I'll send you those details. And reach out to, you, you've probably been talking to one of us, myself, John Metcalf, Sheridan, Chase, our phone numbers and our email addresses are all right there on the screen. Just feel free to go ahead and reach out. And um, I think what we'll do here, um, we, will, we have time for two questions and then we're gonna wrap it up. Beyond that, email us or call us with your questions. We'd love to have you join us in the project. Or if you're thinking about Utah or Idaho, contact us to uh, discuss those projects as well. But we really wanted to highlight Starwood Farms tonight. So, I'll hang around for just a bit. You probably have to mute yourself out to ask a question, but uh, we'll, we got time for two of them, so uh, have at it. It's always a little bit of awkward silence before somebody gets the courage to, to ask one. Would love to get some Jeopardy music going. So what usually happens now is I say, okay, if nobody has any questions, you know, we're going to go ahead and end things. And then like half the time somebody says, hey, Steve, I'm, no, I actually do have a question. <laughs> all right, I bored you all the tears. We're going to wrap it up. Our contact information is on the screen here. Please go ahead and reach out to us with whatever questions you have. We'd love to have you in Starwood Farms or to join us at one of the other projects. And thank you all. Have an excellent night, and we will see you next time.